I'm the author Rome, my book club gathering here at Moko uh, Market downtown Helsinki, Finland. Some uh, new faces I see here today and there's some old faces available around that's uh, regular at the book club reading so it's amazing, nice everyone to see you all and welcome to your new ones. The discussion that we're doing today is from my poetry book, um, Memory of the Heart, and it deals about my emotions, my feelings on my sleeve, and how I felt at a certain time in my life. And also, um, the book is about survival, and it's basically about a celebration of life, how I felt in certain times and moments in my life, what I have survived, and what I had gone through, and what I had accomplished, and what I've gained in love and in friends. So this is Memories of the Heart, and the first poem is Lessons on page 6, and we will go through the poem, and then after we have done the poem, everyone feel free to ask me what you want to ask. And page number 6, Lessons. If you make winning your master, you never learn. If communication is a problem, you never understand. For respect is yours to earn, and to listen is discernment in reply. For love is that upon which we rely. Worrying does not take away the hollow, for there is always still tomorrow. Life is not a meadow, but you don't have to live in someone else's shadow. Love is the hardest thing to find if you go through your day as if you are blind. Trust is what we should live by, but what if your life is nothing but a lie? Why try to impress anyone else, for it is you, yourself, that you should please. Live at your own pace, so you save your soul and have peace. Be happy and learn to smile, for life is a gift we only have for a while. So, what is anybody's feelings and emotions on that? Because if we think about lessons that we go through each day and that we learn from each day, what kind of encouragement does that give to anyone? Yeah. I like that part where it says, in the end it says, for it is you yourself that you should please. Mm -hmm. well, like, sometimes we want to please too much people. Yeah, yeah. yeah but we, yeah. Shouldn't, yeah. we shouldn't. Yeah, because life yeah. is not yeah. about pleasing anyone yeah. else, yeah. it's about yeah. ourselves and what we want to gain, mm -hmm. you know, with our lives and what we want to achieve with our lives. And one of the things that I had taken to pride is taking responsibility for myself. Mm -hmm. Because if we are responsible for the choices we make, we take responsibility for the things that we do in life, whether they are mistakes or whether they are things that we're learning to overcome, it is our responsibility to take. Mm -hmm. Discovery. Nature unfolds us with color in this vast expanse there is no other it teaches us beauty it shows us endurance as a single flower bends against the wind it defends stormy is the sea in rebuke throwing us about in shipwreck as we dispute it has power it has sense of survival how do you reason and think it is a marvel even when we blink. Rain washes away our fear. Even though we know winter is near, we look up at the sky in amazement. You ought to close your eyes and give grace. We think too much of ourselves, as often we must. But do you remember, we are mere dust. This is such an emotional tug because it makes you realize that there's more to life than just you know us thinking of ourselves as we 
you know, alone in this expanse and we really don't need to care. Because at the end of the day, this is self-discovery. And it's about life growing up and really learning from things around us. And nature, for me, this comes from nature. And nature teaches us so much. If we look at a mere little flower in the wind, that flower survived the whole season mm -hmm. through that wind, through that rain. And it almost bends in defense and it comes back. So for me, this poem, Discovery, is really, really about nature and what nature encourages us to realize from its beauty and how we can, in a way, you know, not just give back, but also to each other, you know, not just selfishly thinking about ourselves, but sometimes to be a little bit selfless and think more of others. Okay, Secret of the Heart on page 18 is a very emotional poem that deals with personal or self-emotional depth. Secret of the Heart. Do you love me more than yourself? A lover reveals his heart as he makes known his presence. His desire hungers for you. In his imprisonment, the silence breaks the chains. He dwells in humility since his mind is in bond, dying to himself because he only lives for you. Peace fills their embrace, intensify the ache with brushes of lips, covering their fate. Lost in each other, there is nothing to contemplate, no empty wishes, no touch in vain. Since their hearts dwell as if on a rift, flowing the same way. In their mind they cannot stray, locked in their love, flown so high above. They got carried away, in the wind they play. If ever they are part, silently he whispers, I wish you were here. He longs for you, in his sleep he drifts off in bliss, forgotten everything else and desire thy hand till there is no longer hidden. For only they understand how this love feeds their desire in longing. Open the sky, in their embrace he quietly begs, please don't say goodbye. So how do you understand these words? I mean, how do you fathom this? This is a longing of someone calling out, like almost crying out. And you know, the depth of someone's emotions. And this poem for me came about when my husband went to a place of almost being dark in emotion. Because when you suffer, you know, so much loss, when you think one thing, and something completely different conspire and it's something that you didn't anticipate it buckles your legs from under you because this is so unexpected in life and it hurts because you know sometimes we have expectations and when things don't come about as we anticipated it breaks our hearts and it really takes our minds to a place that we feel what have I done wrong? Because this is how my husband felt. He thought that he had failed me, that he had done something wrong. And how does he please me? How does he make this up to me? And I needed him to understand that he had done nothing wrong. You know, why did he feel in such despair? Like, why did he almost feel like he had to go to his imprisonment in his emotions? So that's where these words coming from, like in your chains, in your imprisonment. Because we go to this like emotional kind of leave me alone because I don't know how else to please, I don't know what else to give. And that's a very dark place for anyone to go. And sometimes you think, oh, that will never happen to me. I'm strong, I'm strong. But it can happen to anyone. It can really cripple anyone's emotions to really you know, get so to this kind of dark, almost place where you feel you alone.
so that's not so easy. So, who can tell me who have a best friend? Trust, accountability, respecting, can tell your deepest secrets and deepest, darkest things too, and they will respect that. Who have a friend like that? Yeah? Wow! <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's me. wow. Always here. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Because it is really so nice, you know, if you can offload and if you can share, you know, very, very deep things of yourself to somebody that you know you can trust. And I need that. I need that to feel like I can speak to somebody about anything in my life and I don't have to be concerned about where it's going to go. To have that kind of trust in a friend is amazing. So the poem on page 55, my best friend is a dedication to Joan. My best friend isn't just a friend by name, but someone who is there all the time. No matter what, I can count on her, and I can trust her with anything and everything. As best friends, we share tears, we share laughter, we connect in emotions, but most importantly, I can always count on her open arms and I can always expect a listening ear, no matter the place or time of the year. Her compliments make me smile with no judgment and no guile. Her straightforwardness and smart wit, the English rose. With my style on her, I impose. I dread the day we move apart, but forevermore, she is in my heart. So this is very dear to me because it was a very personal expression of thanks to Joan for the years that she had always stood by me and that she had always been so eager to just show me that you're fine, you know, everything will be fine. Whatever you decide to do in life, be happy with what you decide in life. And that's what a real friend is. A real friend, it shows us support. And it also shows us no matter what we go through in life, I will be there to listen to you. I will be there that you come, load of your tears, our broad shoulders. That's the amazing thing of having a great friend. So for my final poem today, I have an amazing mother and you know we all, I live in a foreign country and I miss a home, I miss family, so I miss my mother terribly, 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 don't tell her that. So we're going to my final poem, we're going back to page 26. Okay. <laughs> so it's page 26. Oh. And the poem is called oh. Mother. Okay. So is everyone there? Yes. yes. Okay, Frey, Not did yet. you find? Not yet. Okay, because, you know, at certain times of the year, uh, you know, the world think about mother, especially when it is Mother's Day, then, yeah, then it's very important to think about mother. But, you know, mother is the heart of the home. And mother should be shown appreciation every single day. Not just certain times of the year that we remember she's there. And in one of the blogs that I wrote not so long ago, you know, if, if you give a gift to mom, why would you give mom an appliance as a special gift to remind her that those are her chores that she has to take care of for you? So that's not an appropriate gift as far as I'm concerned for mother. You know, a special day for mother to me means giving her something to give her the day off. That means you give her something pretty just for her. You give her a day that she can spoil just for her. A day that she can, you know, just really have as a special moment. Realizing that her children is giving her this special moment. So mother on page 26 I love you mommy 
A rose represents beauty. A rose reminds me of your heart, but the love of a mother endures as she hides her tears. A rose for you, since there is nothing you fear. Even though life has its gloom, may your sorrow be covered with a rose in bloom. You laugh no matter the cost. You suffer whatever the loss. You are a slave for love. May God keep you tender, as only He is your defender. For you, mother, a rose as there is no other. Because that's how special, if I think of mother, comes to mind for me. That she is the most treasured person. And, you know, we don't want to give that despair thought that I need to pray to God in keeping her around. You know, begging for her to stay safe and stay healthy and stay with us for so much longer. And I remember you, Frey, you mentioned your mom came to visit and how special it was to your family after so many years you know, seeing your mother. And, you know, Pipsa, you mentioned your parents are with you tomorrow. So it is really, you know, these moments that we treasure because we live in foreign countries, most of us, and our families are elsewhere. So sometimes we feel this lost and despair, you know, missing mom. And for me, it's very hard because we were very close family and we did so much together. But the joy with my son and I is that we often talk about home and we often talk about mother and family so that the memories and the things are always fresh and that they're always there so it's very very special to us so this is a poem that i would like all of you you know share if you write a letter a note and you know we've gone to the period that we live by emails we don't write letters anymore so you know copy it and paste it and send it to mom from time to time and there's other poems in the book, you know, that you can really, if, if your friend is down, if you have somebody that have an emotional gap or something, send the poem shared. And the most, the most important thing that I'd like everybody to take with here today, the poetry book is my charity project. And I want the poetry book to be donations that I would give in future as I, you know, get funds from the poetry book in, that I want to have it as a purpose, simply for giving back. Mm. So please, tell your friends about the poetry book, buy it as a gift. If you send the email, put the link or put the book and my, you all have my um, website. So give everybody the web address and you know share it with friends so that uh, they buy the book and support 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 because there's such a good purpose behind the poetry book for me it is very very special meaning to me so i'd really want as much people as possible to be able to share that and to get to know that and to understand the purpose behind this book it's not just emotional and beautiful poetry but it has an amazing purpose behind what i want to achieve with it i'm really i'm really so grateful for all the company today for all of the shares today and i'm really from the bottom of my heart i'm grateful that you guys can share this momentous moment to me because a poetry book is really a celebration of life Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the next book that I'm doing is um, the family book and it's Undeniable Truth. So this is the next book that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, does anyone have the book? You have, mm -hmm. you have the book already. Have you got Undeniable yeah. Truth? Yeah. So if you don't have the book, this is the next one. So you can also get it from me. You can also get it directly from me if you want it next. So that's the next book that we're doing and I will notify everyone as soon as possible when we have the next book club. Thank you guys, this was fun. <laughs>